And now, Understanding the Times with Jan Markell, the program committed to helping you contend for the faith and view current events through the lens of the Bible. Here's Jan Markell. I know you lead busy lives, and I am honored that you take a few minutes to a couple of hours to join Understanding the Times Radio. This is the radio and the ministry committed to helping you understand the times, contend for the faith, and become watchmen on the wall. We are going to hit apologetics this hour, and actually the second hour, I believe, will go into apologetics as well. And let me just say this, as I kind of introduce this hour and the topic, and you have heard me use a term, a couple of terms, and maybe even three, and they all mean the same thing, and we're going to talk about that here in the next couple of minutes. Because there was a time not all that long ago when most conservative Christians, true Bible believers, embraced a doctrine of the end times known as dispensationalism. That theology is still embraced by many, thankfully, including many in my audience as I hear from you. But another such theology has arisen, almost taking its place. What is that? Well, the thing that has been taking over churches, particularly for the last, oh, 15, 20 years or so, it isn't new. It's gone by other names in years gone by, including even post-millennialism. But it now goes by several names, including Kingdom Now, Dominionism, and Reconstructionism. In a sentence, as Dr. David Reagan and I will look at more thoroughly in just a moment, This theology believes that we can have heaven on earth now if the church would just take back the earth. Now, understand there are variations on that. So not everyone who's into this stream believes exactly the same thing, but they all believe in variations of this. Now, let me just point out just a few, just a few I don't want to say highlights because they're low lights, but anyway, this theology is born primarily out of the Manifest Sons of God movement, latter reign in the late 40s. Some things they believed, just bullet points. The Antichrist is a spirit, not a person. Armageddon, possibly an ongoing battle between the forces of light and darkness. They would rather follow traditional Bible prophecy, excuse me, rather than following traditional Bible prophecy, they follow new revelations. They want to restore the Eden nature uh, that once was, even though Eden is where sin began. But they would like to bring the earth back to Eden. Again, there are variations on that, and when that happens, then the Lord can return. Let me just say one more thing that I want to bring on, Dr. David Reagan, that the church is not in the business of taking anything away from Satan, but the souls of men. The world is a sinking Titanic, ripe for judgment, not Garden of Eden perfection. Jesus will take dominion of this of the cleansed earth. For men to speak of doing that before the judgment of this earth, I believe is spiritually arrogant. I encourage you to flee such false teachers, and they will be named this hour. God says in Isaiah 66, and I wonder, I can't help but wonder when I deal with apologetics and particularly apostasy, if this is happening. God says in Isaiah 66, 3, I will choose their delusions. Now, whether this is God choosing a delusion, whether it's Satan, I don't know. But I believe that one of the reasons for so much confusion, false theology, apostasy today, I'm not sure the devil is behind all of it, because God says in Isaiah, I will choose their delusions. Okay, there's no other way to interpret at least some of the verses that we have differing, possibly differing sources of delusion that are at the kind of on overdrive today in these last days. I want to welcome back to Understanding the Times Radio the very familiar voice of Dr. David Reagan, who heads Lamb Lion Ministries. Hello, Dave Reagan. 
Well, hello, Jan. It sure is good to be with you today, and I'm looking forward to being with you soon at the conference up there. Yes, and David is one of our speakers at Understanding the Times 09, excuse me, 2010, and I will give you all those details in just a moment. It's October 8th, 9th. David, there are de- different names, and I'm going to name some of the names here behind this movement. I want your, I'm even going to make it, uh, some quotes. I'm going to quote some of them, and I, and I want your, uh, feedback on it. But, you know, I think, and you probably would agree with me that people like this who believe that there's going to be perfection somehow someday, apart from the Lord and the Lord's return, they do not understand the sin nature of man? I would agree. Yes, absolutely. Uh, the whole uh, concept is based upon a fundamental misunderstanding of the nature of man. Uh, it's um, uh, The Bible teaches that man is inherently evil, uh, that uh, man is fallen, that there's nothing more uh, despicable than the human heart. And um, yet uh, these people believe in the inevitable progress of mankind, that things are going to get better and better through education, through proclaiming the gospel and so forth, until finally the church is going to take over the world and rule the world. Well, well, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> let yeah. me let me quote one of those who are sort of a leader in this movement and, and, and get your response. Earl Polk, because he's a major leader, I am not sure if he has de- is deceased. I, I don't yes, know. Yes, he is. He um, has died. All right. But he at one time said most of the participants agree it will contain the good of all the previous moves of God and much more. This will be all-encompassing and will cross all barriers. When God releases his mighty wave, it's going to engulf everybody from Baptists to Episcopalians and from Episcopalians to Catholics and every denomination on the face of the earth. Uh, That is in Paul, I think he may be quoting Paul Cain in God Speaking the Second Time. Um, okay, so this movement is going to be cross-denominational. It's going to hit every denomination, they think. Uh, Earl Park, uh also, uh, you know, I have a quote here where he says we're little gods. Yes, and If yes. we would just, ex- uh, you know, exert our uh, deity that uh, is inherent in us as little gods, that we can uh, speak into existence uh, a reality, and that reality would be the church taking over the world. I mean, this is just off the wall, uh, Jan. He also says, um, let's see here, is it possible that there will be a people who so possess the authority of Almighty God as Elijah did that they, as a group, will say to death, hell, and the spirit of Satan, we will not die. We will stay here and be changed, and we will call Jesus Christ to return to this earth as King of kings and Lord of lords. Yes, that's what I believe the church must do. Now, statements that's like the, that's the old manifest sons of God yeah. theology that uh, that we're going to evolve into perfect beings in the end times, mm-hmm. and that we will be godlike, and uh, that uh, some even argue that uh, we would not uh, be subject to death; that they could shoot at us and we would still be alive. You know, and all. <laughs> it's again, amazing. Again, David, this goes back to almost science fiction theology, but 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 let me follow that comment up with a question. And that is this theology, and we're going to name some more leaders of it, that this theology is now rampant. Uh, look, you're, you've been in this at eschatological world, actually maybe even longer than I have. You, when did you start hearing talk like this? Well, I uh, first, in, in the modern age, I first uh, began to run across it uh, in the... Um, I guess probably, I would say, in the 1970s, Mm -hmm. uh, when um, Dominion Theology uh, 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 came to the foreground uh, under the writings of uh, Rosses Rushdoony and Gary North. Yes. And um, Dominion Theology, uh, uh, you mentioned it, is uh, is based upon, it's a Reformed theology, and they, of course, replace Israel with the church, and uh, they argue that uh, it is the role of the church uh, to take over the world primarily uh, through uh, political action. Uh, They're very politically oriented, and they believe the church can, through the preaching of the gospel and political action, that the church would take over the world and uh, that they would put the world under the Old Testament laws. Uh, They believe very strongly that uh, the New Testament applies only uh, after the the Lord comes. Uh, 
but that uh, we would put the world under the Old Testament laws uh, of uh, Moses and uh, reign over all the world, and therefore the Lord could not come back for at least a thousand years after the church takes over the world. Bishop Polk, uh, his version was called Kingdom Now, and it uh, was a, a little bit different, as you pointed out, in the sense that this is primarily characteristic of the charismatic movement, the hyper-charismatic movement, and uh, their theory is, no, uh, we're going to do this supernaturally. We're going to do it by speaking this into existence. Uh, we're going to do it by, for example, uh, having marches around cities and claiming those cities for the Lord Jesus Christ mm -hmm. and uh, engaging in all kinds of uh, uh, weird activities to, uh, uh, to bring down the, uh, uh, the supernatural demons that are controlling these cities and replace them with angels who are... Uh, uh, under the direct authority of God. And so you've got, it, it's really strange, the two groups hate each other with a passion okay. uh, because the, uh, the Dominion group is not charismatic at all, and the uh, charismatic group doesn't have any respect for the uh, Dominion group, and yet they came together in a coalition and put aside all their differences because they agreed that the purpose of the church is to take over the world and rule the world for at least a thousand years before Jesus Christ returns. Mm -hmm. Again, you know, this is, this is pretty delusional. I do cover false theology of all sorts on this program and, and some of it, um, defies description. And, <laughs> and you wonder, I mean, how some folks can, and I think what was going on, at least in the early 1900s, perhaps up until about World War One, and I'm going by memory here from some things I've read that People believe that this post-millennialism yes. that um, is similar to all this. Let's leave it there. It's similar to all this. They, 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 they too, thought there could be more of a perfect world. And That's then, true. Oh, you know, uh, uh, Jan, really, uh, this is uh, a, a doctrine that goes back to the early uh, beginnings of Christianity because about 400 A.D., uh, you had Augustine come up with the whole concept of amillennialism. Yes. And the Catholic Church bought that hook, line, and sinker, and mm -hmm. it became the official doctrine of the Catholic Church church and is to this day and part of that was dominion theology but we have to define define the word amillennialism yeah well amillennialism is the belief that uh, the millennium is spiritual in nature that it started at the cross and it will continue until jesus christ returns it's not just a thousand year literal reign here on the church, uh, earth it, it spiritualizes all of bible prophecy and so what happened is the roman catholic church bought into that because yeah. Part of that idea was that the church is the kingdom, and therefore the pope would be the vicar of Christ, and it is the responsibility of the church to reign over all the world and to bring the kingdom of God from heaven down to earth. And so that has always been Catholic theology and is until this day. It didn't become Protestant theology until the uh, 1500s, I believe it was, uh, yeah, I'm uh, sorry, the 1600s, when a Unitarian minister by the name of Daniel Whitby, who didn't even believe in the divinity of Jesus, developed the whole concept of post-millennialism, the belief that the church would, would eventually take over the world through the preaching of the gospel and that the world would be Christianized and that the church would reign for a thousand years and Jesus Christ would come back. It was, a, it was an expression of the uh, belief in man that was rampant at that time in the 1600s, uh, the idea that um, there's no limit to what man can do. It's a very humanistic concept. And then the interesting thing, Jan, is that at the beginning of the 20th century, nearly all Protestant denominations were post-millennial. Nearly all of them believed that the 20th century was going to be the century when the church would take over the world and reign over all the earth. And then yeah. the 20th century began, and we had <laughs> World War One, the yeah. Great Depression, World War II, mm -hmm. and, and post-millennialism was just blown away and uh, ceased to exist, really, because very few people could believe in the inevitable progress of mankind. And then suddenly in the 70s, all this began to be revived with Dominion theology and then with the charismatic movement and the hyper-charismatic movement with the uh, Kingdom Now concept. But you know, Jan, really, even before that, in the 1920s and 30s, your mainline Protestant denominations 
uh, really bought into this because they began to say that the real purpose of the church was not the preaching of the gospel. Mm -hmm. The real purpose of the church was social justice and bringing about a better society. And they began to buy into the idea that the church was supposed to go out and get involved in all kinds of politics and elect certain people and make the society a better society. It was called the social gospel. Mm -hmm. So it's been around, you know, in many different terms, many different ways. Right. And now the very latest manifestation of it,